right. Well, good morning, everyone. Happy World Ocean Day, and welcome to today's Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants event. My name is Joe Gorowski, and I will be your host for today. I hope you've managed to tune in throughout the week already. We have an amazing event series in partnership with the Explorers Club. In fact, I'm broadcasting live from the Explorers Club in New York all week long. We have an amazing group of ocean explorers, scientists, uh, filmmakers, conservationists who are sharing their stories, how they're documenting, how they're researching, how they're protecting our planet's incredible ocean. So it's been an absolutely amazing week so far. I'm going to share a little link here. If you want to visit exploringbytheseat.com backslash ocean week, you can find all the events still to come. We have a playlist so you can tune into the events that you may have missed. Uh, and then, of course, you can register to tune in live, tune in to the recordings, or there's still a couple camera spots left if you look around. So you might be able to get your class front and center with us uh, for one of these live events. Now, this is I'm really excited. We are heading. It's always great when we can head out live into the field. And that's our plan for today. We're going to take a little journey to Nicaragua and we are going to get to meet an amazing team there. So let me make sure I get some of these introductions right. We're going to head down. We're going to meet. Uh, Dr. Pamela Fletcher, she's a program director for the Fabian Cousteau Ocean Learning Center. We also have uh, Martin, who is joining us from Florida. He's one of the program directors as well with the FCOLC. And then we've got the amazing team, amazing team of women down in Nicaragua who are with us. So I'm going to bring everybody in for a nice hello here. So there's Martin. There's our sea turtle team. Hola, how are we doing today? Como está? All right. Well, it's so great to have everybody live today. We have a really cool event in store. We have a little video that's going to take us into some of the work of the Fabian Cousteau Ocean Learning Center and the sea turtle work. Then we have a really exciting Kahoot quiz. So I'm going to put some links in the chats for the classrooms to get ready for our live Kahoot quiz. Then we're going to go live to Nicaragua and we're going to check out some of the amazing work uh, that they're doing, rescuing uh, sea turtles and, and releasing the young back into the ocean. So everybody's going backstage temporarily. We're going to bring up the video and uh, I absolutely can't wait um, uh, to dive right with everybody. So here we go. Thanks again for the wonderful introduction, Joe. I'm going to start us off with this presentation about seeing sea turtles survive in celebration of World Ocean Day. I'm Pamela Fletcher. I'm the program director with the Fabian Cousteau Ocean Learning Center. And I hope we can explore by the seat of our pants a little bit in looking at sea turtles and some undersea adventures. As we begin, I want to wish you a happy World Oceans Day. As many of you know, the first United Nations World Oceans Day was observed in 2009. And if I'm guessing correctly, the majority of those participating in this session live their entire lives having at least this one special day, World Oceans Day, each year of your life. What I'd like to do now is start off on a journey to share a little bit of background information how I have lived my life exploring by the seat of my pants and I hope to encourage and inspire each one of you to do the same. As a little girl, I liked going to the beach. That's probably where my fascination with the ocean first began. And my love of the ocean really set the stage for me to pursue school and work that really were tied to being on the ocean or in the ocean. I grew up in the northeastern portion of the United States. We all know what happens there. I was fortunate enough to be able to visit Florida and tropical environments to really get into some warm ocean waters. So just looking at this picture, if you were going to be a marine scientist, which environment would you want to live in? So after many years of working in the snow, I set my eyes on South Florida with numerous national parks and a marine sanctuary. And if you look closely here, you'll see that at the southern tip of the Florida Peninsula, there's not only a national marine sanctuary, but there's many natural areas that I just absolutely fell in love with. Everglades National Park, Biscayne National Park, and the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary are just a few of those protected areas in South Florida that I really wanted to learn more about and explore. 
I found what I call my sense of place. There was city life, but it was nestled between these two natural areas where I could go 15 minutes to the west to begin to get into Everglades National Park or Biscayne National Park, or I could go to the east and I would get into these wonderful marine ocean treasures. And while I love exploring South Florida, I have a fascination for international marine conservation, both learning and gathering information from others about different types of conservation activities that could be implemented or designed both in Florida and around the globe. And if any of you are thinking about marine science as a career, I encourage you to look at not only cool science research that you can do around the globe, but also educational opportunities. So whether it's school or work, you can learn so much about yourself and about the areas that you're visiting and studying. One of my favorite projects was studying coral reefs and the fish that live on those reefs around the Caribbean. So it's absolutely amazing to interact with so many different island nations and those individuals working to protect and conserve coral reefs. And to take some of the information and knowledge I gained from traveling to bring that back to South Florida and apply and understand my ecosystem a little bit better. So what do you think? Was I exploring by the seat of my pants through all these journeys? And my journey did not end there. I started to explore other areas of science that would help me understand the coral reef ecosystem. So some of you might be thinking, Dr. Fletcher, what were you doing studying soil? And I have to tell you, it helped me understand the coral reef ecosystem so much better because of the links of the land with the sea. While I was studying soil, I was always thinking about the water that would pass over the land and then go out into these reef ecosystems. And in South Florida, we've got this perfect living laboratory to look at what is happening on the land with Everglades National Park and Biscayne National Park and how that land and sea connection with our coral reef at our National Marine Sanctuary, how these two ecosystems work together, the land and the sea. So take a little moment and think about that land and sea connection and how the exploration, the study of those areas helps us to see those sea turtles survive. So the exploration of the land and the sea where we start to see sea turtles nest and where we start to see baby sea turtles hatch out, the fun stuff. We have to think about that sediment, that beach sand and where that comes from. Is it coming from the uplands where there are mountains and what's happening in those mountains? Here you can see on the left hand side of this image, this is a farm that's not too far away from a nesting beach and in the middle, these are bags of samples of the sediment collected at the farm and also at the beach so we can start to see the relationship between the land and the sea which we know ultimately affects where these sea turtles are nesting and we've got our little baby hatchouts. Another way to study soils for the benefit of seeing sea turtles survive is by temperature. If you have darker sands the sun beating down on those sands is going to be warmer. And I'm not sure if any of you know, we have a little name, we say hot chicks, right? And cool guys. So hot chicks, when it's a hotter temperature, normally the mama's nest has more girls or maybe is all girls. And if it's a cooler temperature, when that nest is incubating, we can have more male baby sea turtles hatch out. So we're looking at the color and also the grain size. So the sizes of those tiny pieces of sand because those allow air to circulate in that nest. So the soil and the land sea connection is very real with seeing sea turtles survive. So now I get to ask you, can you see the different types of ways you can explore by the seat of your pants, whether it's in the classroom and using different data and information to learn about sea turtles and the world they live in, 
or getting out into the field. Maybe you're inspiring some of you to go and travel or visit some of these natural areas. I sure hope so. At the Fabian Cousteau Ocean Learning Center, we like to call this exploration See, Learn, and Do. Getting involved in protecting the ocean through knowledge and hands-on experiences. We start with C, raising global awareness. Things like what you're doing today, getting involved in the United Nations World Ocean Day. You are learning about the human ocean connection. Learn. This might be the teacher in your classroom with you right now or what you do at home, or it could be some of the ocean discovery curriculum that the Ocean Learning Center has for schools. You might decide you wanna be an aquanaut and live underwater. Or if you wanna learn more about protecting sea turtles. And Mission 31 and Beyond, where Fabian lived underwater with a team of other aquanauts for 31 days. And this brings us to the final step of do, empowering communities and individuals like you to get involved. The Ocean Learning Center has activities in Curaçao, which is a small island off the coast of Venezuela that will be working on Proteus and underwater habitat, along with some coral reef ecosystem science and education. In Florida, the Ocean Learning Center is focused on marine debris, habitat restoration and monitoring, and partnering with organizations to assist in coral reef restoration activities. One example in Florida with the See, Learn, Do concept is looking at a project like oyster restoration. In the beginning, students learn about oysters and their importance to shoreline stabilization and water quality. Then they get involved in actually building oyster restoration modules, and then they'll bring them out to a restoration site and actually place them in an area for monitoring to learn and record what is actually changing through these restoration projects. Another example from Florida are mangroves. Not everybody probably has mangroves growing in their backyard, but we have lots of them here in Florida. And these are a group of students who are monitoring mangroves and looking at the growth and the animals, the biodiversity that can be found in these amazing coastal trees. The third program the Ocean Learning Center has is in Nicaragua. And this is really, really important as we build relationships with local communities and help facilitate and support their sea turtle and women empowerment program. This brings us to the heart of the presentation with seeing sea turtles survive and how we can contribute to helping the survival and the conservation of sea turtles in our global ocean. The project location is in Central America in the state of Nicaragua. It is an island called the Isla Juan Venado Nature Reserve, and it includes both an island, a beach area, with some marine areas, so parts of the ocean. We have women and girls who participate in the sea turtle conservation efforts. And in just a moment, you should be meeting some of our project team members along with our project manager, Martin Moldina, who is tucked into this slide over on the left-hand side. He, he was caught helping out with a mangrove cleanup, so we included him, but you should be meeting the team in just a moment. I wanted to highlight two of the lead team members, both Anna and Ariseli. They are our team mamas. They help the women and girls who participate in the project. They oversee the entire program on the ground and they work tirelessly to help save those sea turtles. In addition, we have some young ladies. So maybe just like some of you in the classrooms, we have Yadiras, Jenny, and Junisi. This project has inspired these young girls to be interested in marine biology or veterinarian science, 
and just being aware of taking care of nature and the importance of the human connection to our oceans and the resources we find in the ocean. So let's jump into See, Learn, Do with regards to seeing sea turtles survive. Think of some ways that you would actually see. Remember what seeing is. It's building global awareness. One example of C is having the youngest members of the team go out and learn side by side with our older team members. Another example of building global awareness is through beach cleanups. The sea turtle team in Nicaragua organizes and leads cleanup events to build global awareness of the marine debris issue, not only for humans, but also for those sea turtles. The team gets to see the environment. They go from the mainland out to the island on a boat. They see nest excavations. This is where sea turtle nests that were laid along the beach, they are moved into the safety and security of a hatchery. And once the date passes, when those nests should have hatched, the team goes and starts to examine the remains inside that nest. They see baby sea turtle releases. The next step is learn. They learn about the species of sea turtles that lay nests on the island. So four of the seven species of sea turtles found worldwide nest. And you might want to take a note of this slide because there could be a question on this later on. But you can see the four sea turtles listed here. These all nest on the beaches in the nature reserve, the hawksbill, the leatherback, the olive ridley, and the green sea turtle. Another item the team learns about are the differences between land turtles and sea turtles. So here you see a big leatherback sea turtle nesting on the beach. She's got her flippers where she's moving the sand out of the way in order to build her nest cavity and she'll put her eggs in there. So you can see her head and her flippers very clearly. But in the upper right hand side, there's a picture of a land turtle. And what you see here is, oh, there's no head, there's no flippers. You don't see any of those parts. So one of the differences between sea turtles and terrestrial or land turtles is that land turtles can pull their head and their flippers into the protection of their shell where sea turtles cannot. Another fun fact the team learns about is that sea turtles, when they're resting, they can hold their breath up to seven hours is what we've learned. So they can take a big long nap underwater. The group also learns about the chances of survival. So this gets really tied into seeing sea turtles survive and about one in a thousand turtles survives to adulthood. So when you start to think about all those little baby sea turtles hatching out, some might get dehydrated or they might get eaten by predators, but it's really just about one in 1,000 sea turtles survive to adulthood. The team also learns how to place a flipper tag, almost like an earring, on the flipper of the sea turtle. So when a sea turtle mama comes up to the beach, a flipper tag is placed on her and this helps the team understand, is this turtle returning to the beach? Does she return a few times to lay a few nests during one nesting season or one year? Or is she just here one time and then we don't see her again? So it helps us understand where this sea turtle may be moving around in the region or globally in our ocean. That brings us to the final step in see, learn, do. Once the team has seen and they learn, they begin to do such as these measurements on this olive ridley turtle. They are measuring how big her shell is, how big she is. 
they count eggs and they relocate them into the safety of the sea turtle hatchery. They examine the nests once the hatching has occurred. They take care of the sea turtle nests. Here you can see one of our turtle nest adoptions. Jenny's been caring for it over the course of about 45 days, making sure all those baby sea turtles are going to hatch out. Adicelli is measuring and weighing a sea turtle to get the health and some basic information about those little sea turtles before they're released. Here you can see a newer team member working with Adi to measure a sea turtle hatchling while she records the data. And that concludes the presentation portion of Seeing Sea Turtles Survive. I know we've got some hands-on activities and some live stream for all of you. I thank you for your attention and really invite you to see, learn, do, and get involved in building ocean awareness and being the next generation of ocean stewards. Thanks again. All right. We do have some interactive activities coming up now. We're gonna jump into our Kahoot quiz before we then head down to the team in Nicaragua and we're going to get to see a little bit of them in action in the field. I can't wait for that part. So time for the Kahoot. Uh, here is the link. If you head to kahoot.it, it is going to then ask you for a pin number. And I have one of those handy. I'm going to share my screen in just a moment. So let's get that going. Let's get that pin number in for everybody. You can already hear the music in the background. There we go. So Pin number today is 824-100-100. You can enter that at the website, or if you have something like a tablet or a cell phone, you can scan that QR code right next to it. If you have one-to-one -one devices in your classroom, then you can do this right at your seat. If not, your teacher, he or she, can still put it up on the board, maybe on the smart board, and you can shout out your answer. So let's give about another 30 seconds or so uh, to get some more students in here. We have a series of questions uh, they are 20 seconds for each question. There's a little bit of true and false, a little bit of multiple choice. If you get the right answer, you get some points. If you get the right answer and do it really quickly, well, there's even more points for you. If you get that wrong answer, but you put it in really, really fast, nothing. You got to get the answer right, and then you need it uh, as quickly as you can to get those bonus points. And we'll see who comes out on top. We're just passing the 100 student mark, which is great. Let's give another few seconds and then we will take it live. And then we're going to go live uh, to Central America. Pretty excited. As you can see, we have lots of fun animal names today. It's picking automatically, but we've got the dazzled meerkat, the aquatic zebra, ah, the eager fox, the smiling giraffe. Very, very cool. All right, 10 more seconds to get in here with that code and then we're going to go live. All right, let's take this quiz live. Here we go, sea turtle action. First question coming in front and center, how many sea turtle species are there worldwide? Was it three, five, seven, or 10? Four options there for you, three species, five, seven, or 10. We've got about five seconds on the clock to get that answer locked in, and then we'll see how we're doing. All right, most students rolled with seven. That's absolutely correct. And what does that do? The genius hamster is holding down the lead, but it's tight. Anything can happen in this next group of questions. How many species nest in Nicaragua? Is it two, four, five or all seven species. Two species, four, five or seven using those beaches as a nesting spot. All right, so there's even a little cue from Dr. Pam and she said, pay attention to this slide. Good job, everybody. It is four species. Let's jump to our next question. Genius hamster holding down that spot. Which species nest at the project site in Nicaragua? Was it the Eastern Hawksbill, the Leatherback, 
the all of Ridley, the green, or is it all of the above? So which species nests at the project site? We got four options there and all of the above as well. A couple more seconds on the clock. All right, all of the above. Good job, crew. What's that gonna do to us? The Agile Wildcat is sneaking into that top spot. Very cool. We got a couple true and false to wrap things up. Sea turtles cannot retract their head and flippers into their shell. So sea turtles cannot retract their head and flippers into their shell. Is that true or is that false? I definitely remember some cool pictures in the presentation that tell us all about that. We know our freshwater sea turtle friend or our freshwater turtle friends can absolutely uh, retract their head and their feet, but true, the sea turtle cannot. Agile Wildcat holding down. Final question. Oh, actually, two more questions. How long can they hold their breath while resting or sleeping underwater? So a sea turtle. How long can they hold their breath? 10 minutes, an hour, three hours, or even up to seven hours. As a diver myself, I sure wish that I, I mean, I would accept any of those, but uh, seven hours would be pretty awesome. Good job, crew. Definitely paying attention today, up to seven hours. Leaderboards remaining pretty steady. Let's take our last true and false question and see who hits the podium. A hatchling's chance of survival to adulthood is one in 100. A hatchling's chance of survival is one uh, in 100. Ooh, very, very split. Uh, but it is actually false. It's one, about one in a thousand. There's so many challenges facing baby sea turtles from dehydration and of course being eaten by predators even before they get uh, off of the beach. So it's not easy being small. What does that do to our leaderboard? Third place, we have the kind panda. Good job, kind panda. Second place, the eager gazelle. Very cool. And holding down that top spot, the Arctic Swan swooping in at the end to, to take away the victory. Very cool. All right. Well, thanks so much, all the classrooms, for playing a little Kahoot action with us. I'm going to come back from my screen share, and we are going to go on to another little segment, and we are going to bring in uh, some of our team. So let's bring Martine back in. Here he is. Let's bring in our sea turtle team. All right. Good to see everybody. Thank you for that great presentation. Uh, and we are excited to dive right in and learn more about your work. All right, thank you. So the team's going to demonstrate a couple of things right now. Um, they're going to demonstrate how to uh, you know, how we work the sea turtle from the minute we cat, you know, find her and then until we release her. So go ahead, team. Muchacha. Okay. Hola, buenos días. Mi nombre es Ana. Saludos desde Nicaragua. Saludos de Nicaragua, estamos ubicados en Las Peñitas, es, tenemos una de nuestras playas en la isla Juan Venado. Damos un cordial saludo de parte del proyecto FCONC a cada uno de ustedes. En este momento vamos a dar a nuestras playas, nos visitan cuatro especies de tortuga marina, lo que es la tora, tenemos la torita, la caré y la palama. En este momento vamos a hacer una demostración del trabajo que realizamos en nuestras playas de lo que es la tortuga paslasma. El primer procedimiento que hacemos es revisar nuestra tortuguita que no venga lesionada ni en su cuello ni en su aleta, porque hemos tenido algunas que han salido mal de su aleta. En este momento vamos a, a proceder a lo que es la medición de nuestra, de nuestra tortuga y lo va a hacer nuestra compañera Candy. Buenos días, me llamo Candy y vamos a utilizar este centímetro de largo. De la que estuve, 67 de largo, ancho, 71 de la 
después de, de medida nuestra tortuga, vamos a realizar lo que es el enchapado. El enchapado consiste en lo que es usar este, esta, para poder tener conocimiento de cuántas tortugas nos, nos visitan a nuestras playas. Como ya les, ya les había mencionado, nos visitaban cuatro especies, en lo cual nosotros nos hemos dado cuenta de que nos han regresado a visitar por medio de nuestra chapa, la que es la tortuga tora, tuvimos la suerte y la bendición de que ella nos visitó por siete veces. ¿Cómo nos dimos cuenta? Por el código que nuestra chapa tiene y el correo que ella tiene. Ahorita vamos a proceder a lo que es... Ahorita vamos a proceder a lo que es desinfectar nuestra chapa. En el momento que ella está desobando, lo realizamos por el mismo momento en el que ella está más calma. Procedemos... Procedemos a desinfectar nuestra chapa, nuestra tenaza y procedemos a enchapar en la aleta derecha con el, con el código. En la segunda escama procedemos y el código es el NI0948. Procedemos a desinfectar nuestra aleta izquierda. En la segunda escama también con el número NI0949. Ya que nuestra tortuga ha desobado, vamos a proceder a lo que es el pesaje de nuestra tortuga. Uh, Martín, while they're doing a quick change over there, so they were just measuring for us. Look like they were measuring shell and also the flipper. Yes. So, so the first step is once they cut, we, you know, we find the sea turtle, we measure the shell, the length, the width of the sea turtle, uh, and then we make sure she has no injuries on her shell or her neck. Uh, if she has any barnacles or any type of injuries, we record that. After that, we go on to flipper tag them. You know, we first clean the equipment and then we clean the area where we flip the tag, which is on her flipper, her area, and her shell. Then we flip the tag, and it's very important to flip a tag because they point to one. Now, if they, where, do they, where do they go and when do they come back? For example, last year we tagged one leather back and she came back seven times. So that was the first time we ever uh, reported this in, in our project that, you know, without the flip tag, we, we would have said, oh, we have seven leatherbacks. But no, she was the same mama that came back seven times. And also another important thing for flip tagging is they might travel far, far, far away. So this flip tag has a code. So if anybody finds them, they put that code and then we receive an email to see where she's traveled. The next step after that is we weigh the sea turtle to find out their age, um, just to record any information that is important to that specific turtle. So now they're gonna go ahead and, and weigh the sea turtle. Después de haber realizado el pesaje de nuestra tortuga y ella haya terminado su desove, vamos a lo que es la recolecta y a la siembra de nuestro vivero. So now, after the, they did all the measurements and they worked the sea turtle, we collect the eggs and we bring them back safe to our hatchery. We go back to a safe place and we plant them for 45 days and then they hatch. So the ladies are going to demonstrate what they do, you know, bring the eggs to the hatchery and um, put them in the ground and then monitor them. Buenos días, mi nombre es Belke, la encargada del vivero, eh, sembramos los huevos. En este momento vamos a proceder a sembrar lo que es los huevos que puso la tortuga. Vamos a hacer un nido de 45 centímetros de profundidad, que es nuestro largo de, de brazo, el codo. So, we bring the eggs back and the ladies excavate a hole 45 centimeters deep. That's the average 
the tour long. As you can see, she digs it, and then we're gonna place the eggs in the nest, cover the eggs, just like the sweet girl mama would. En este momento vamos a agarrar lo, lo que son los huevos para este, sembrarlo en el nido. So now we place them very carefully. Um, all of our ladies and girls have learned how to handle the eggs. You have to be very careful, you know, for them from where we find them to the hatchery. So we, you know, once we capture the eggs, we walk them very slowly, put them very carefully, just like their babies in their safe place until they hatch. Ahorita hemos sembrado tres docenas y media que son 42 huevos de que nuestra tortuga de sobo. Ahora vamos a enterrarlo. So now we'll cover it. Le damos 45 días para que ellos explosionen y después de 45 días nace nuestra tortuga baby. So after 45 days, we begin to monitor them to see how many hatch and make sure that the survivor is good. <laughs> So after 45 days, as you can see, Jenny is excavating the nest very carefully to find any seed that have come up. Some come up sooner than others, but you have to be very careful when you're excavating the nest. So actually today we had a, a nest hatch and a, this is a baby sea turtle. After we do this, we're going to release them. So we measure the width, the length, and the thickness of the baby sea turtle. We also inspect the sea turtle, make sure she's got all of her eyes, mouth, flippers, sometimes. So we have to make sure and record. So you need to just speak her own and record the information before we release her to the there's another one. The connection. And that is the process of the baby sea turtle. After all that, we let her go into the ocean and hopefully she survives. So thank you for your attention. If we have any questions from the classrooms, you can put those in the chat and you can have them asked and we'll do our best to respond. You're muted. Uh. Thank you so much for that presentation, for the Kahoot, for meeting uh, the amazing team members. Uh, really, really cool. You're doing incredible work. So let's start bringing in some of our live classrooms and let's start grabbing some of their questions because I know, I have no doubt there's going to be a lot. So we're going to start in New Jersey, some grade fives with Ms. Lackey. So 
let me bring them in front and center here. Here they come. Hey, fifth graders, how are we doing? Good morning. Hey, everyone. Hola. 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 Um, where is the turtle's biggest predator? Like, okay, great question. So what are the turtle's biggest predators? I would say from our experience in Nicaragua, what they are are birds, believe it or not. In that area, we have lots of birds, uh, and that's what the ones that eat the most. So what we do, we release them in the afternoon when the birds go to bed. We release them in the daytime, the pelicans, every time. Uh, it's the seat of Nicaragua in our project area. I have to see the birds. All right, great question. Another group now. Let's go. Oops, there we go. Let's go to Farmington, Missouri. We have a summer school crew hanging out. Let's bring them in. Hi. 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 All right, Maya has a question. Go for it. Miss Dillon, can you repeat that for me? Uh, she wants to know why the sea turtles go to the water. In Missouri, all our turtles live on land. Oh, okay. So uh, they're wondering why why they head directly to the water after they hatch. Oh, well, they know that's where they come from. They are they are programmed for that. So they know water, you know. So they come from the water, they go back to the water, and uh, and. and they actually, when they reach their adulthood, they say they come back to where you release them from. So we have nothing to prove that yet because you can flip a tire baby sea turtle, but that's what they say. Yeah. Yeah. So they head down to the water and then that's that's their life for a long time. They're not coming back to shore unless, you know, like a female, they're 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 laying in their eggs and that. And then I think sometimes maybe they come on shore just to warm up occasionally. Is that true? Uh, not sure. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, let's jump into another question, or sorry, another class here. Ms. Robinson's crew is with us in Canada, in Petawawa. Uh, I am going to scroll down and bring them front and center. Hey, grade sevens, how are we doing? Hi. Um, do you ever have two species of turtle, sea turtles ever bred with each other? Okay. Did you get that, Martine? Yes. Great question. No, I, I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah, they're too different. They're just too Be different good. genetically. Yeah. Some are, some are bigger than others, so there's no way for them to mate. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Interesting. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, bud. Good question. Good question. All right. The team 216 is joining us. Let me see. Oh, I'll have to bring them in and let them tell us where they're from. Let's bring in Team 216 from, oh, there we go, Baldwinsville. How are you doing, Team 216? Ooh, nice big group. Good to see you. Okay. Okay, I think I got the question. It was wondering about how the temperature can affect the male and female in the nest. Yeah, that's that. Just to clarify, yes, she heard that temperature affects the gender, and she's yeah. wondering how. Yeah. Well, we're not sure how, but we know the different temperatures, you know, that determines on the on the on the sex of the of the sea turtle, like Dr. Fletcher said. Um, not sure why it depends on, you know, like the little grinds of the sand. That, that you know, that that has something to do with if the temperature will be cold, colder, or hotter, or the sand's gonna be colder or hotter. You know, that's that's what happens in there. Uh, you know, 
it just has to um, naturally happen. Yeah, and like uh, Dr. Fletcher said, uh, the way to remember, hot chicks and cool dudes. Hot chicks and cool dudes. More females, and the cooler ones, you get more males. Yeah. Yes, hot chicks. And that, that's definitely something to think about, right? With our changing temperatures, with our changing climate, um, that's definitely going to have an impact on the, on the nest. Yes, climate change. Yes, that's very true. All right. Let's grab another classroom here. Grade fours hanging out with us. Where are they? Winnipeg, Manitoba. Let me bring them in front and center. Hey, Winnipeg, how we doing? Hi, everyone. Can you go one more time? How many sea turtles? Oh, was that how many sea turtles have they saved? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This year, we have released 29,500 sea turtles this year. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> we, we, we collected uh, 31,000 uh, eggs were moved to the hatchery, so we've had a great success this year. Wow. Amazing. Yes. Almost 30,000. That's incredible. Yes. Great work. Great question from Winnipeg as well. Thank you. Um, Martine, a question from the YouTube chat for some of the team members. Does maybe a, a couple members of the team want to tell us what their favorite part of their job is, a favorite part of the work, the conservation? Okay. I will ask him. Julio. Una pregunta para ustedes. Ustedes. ¿Qué parte de este proyecto es tu favorito? Jenny? She's saying checking the nest and seeing them hatch and then releasing them to the ocean. That's her favorite part. Anita, ¿qué parte es su favorito de ese proyecto? Bueno, ha sido una experiencia bastante bonita porque además de que las conservamos, las cuidamos, trabajar en equipo ha sido una, una, una labor bastante que nace del corazón y por lo cual lo hacemos con mucho gusto cada una de las cosas que realizamos. Ana said that she loves all around everything about CITRO program because uh, it it's a whole a whole cycle. She she likes it from the beginning to the end. That's her favorite part, from collecting the eggs, from protecting the eggs, from releasing the eggs. And you know, once you get attached, she's saying that it feels like from the heart. That what she's doing is from her heart, and she gives them love so they can go back to the ocean. That's her favorite part. Give them love. All right, amazing. Uh, I'm going to go to YouTube again here, and Francesca would like to know about, can you tell which species of sea turtle it is from the eggs, or do you have to wait till they hatch? No, you can tell from the eggs. Leatherback eggs are bigger, mm -hmm. and then you have the green sea turtles that are smaller, and then you got the, all the really that are a little smaller, and then you have the house of the eggs. Very little, so you can tell by the eggs what type of species they are. All right. Uh, another question here from YouTube, wondering about uh, the age of the sea turtles. Uh, how how old can a sea turtle be, and what's the oldest one that you think you've worked with? The team has worked with. Ooh, great question. Um, I'm not sure what the old the old one is. But um, we know they get to live a very long time. Uh, you know, we've got some sea turtles that come up and like we can tell they're older because their shelf is kind of deteriorating, you know, their eyes. So you can tell they're a lot older, but, um, you know, we cannot tell how old she was. That's why we do weigh them, we measure them. And at one point when we do all the studies and we collect our data, maybe we can find out. Yeah. I guess the only way to really keep track is if, if a tag turtle is captured repeatedly over the years. Correct. Then, yeah. That'll be, that's, that's one of the things we, we, you know, we're tagging. So. so last year, this year we've had 
20 sea turtles come back that we tagged in 20 and 19. Wow. So those are only recorded. Very cool. Yeah, we've tagged this, you know, a total of like 250 in the last two years. So and we've seen them come back to us, and those are yeah. recorded. We keep a log, and we see if they come back. That means they come back to the same beach. Yeah. Those um uh, the 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 two little sea turtles that that just hatched. Uh, the students are wondering what species they are. Olive Ridley's. Olive Ridley's. Very cool. Amazing. Uh, okay, let's squeeze in one more question here. Uh, oh, here they're coming back to the camera. I think. No, here we go. Let me zoom in. Oh wow. Beautiful. Now, uh, maybe the team can answer this question for us. When you release them, do you put them right in the water or do they need a little time to crawl on the beach? No, we, they need a little time to crawl on the beach. So we don't put them in the water, maybe uh, 100 feet back, and we put their head towards the ocean and they go straight to the ocean. Yeah, all right. And then... Uh, we, we make it. We, we try to do it as natural as possible. Yeah, you know, but with yeah, the predators, you know, just try to keep the predators away. Yes. What about if one of them flips over? A couple of classrooms were wondering if one flips over on the way to the beach, can they turn back over? Yes, they do. They turn back over. Oh you my see god! Her? Look, look her strong. They're very strong. She's trying to crawl in the basket. Yeah, she wants to get going. Very agile. Yes. Oh my gosh, we're gonna, so we're gonna, this, we're going to release these little guys right after we get the presentation. We'll take them and release them. Wow, what a, it's, it's such a treat to see these two beautiful, these two beautiful sea turtles on World Ocean Day. Uh, gracias to the, this, this is just amazing. Look at her coming up. Dice el gracias. 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 All right, well, I hate to, to have to wrap things up, but uh, I want to start off with a huge shout out to all of the classrooms who joined us today. Thank you for the amazing questions. Thank you, Thank you for being live with us. I want to yeah. share a link here. If you want to dig deeper and learn more about the Fabian Cousteau uh, Ocean Learning Center. Oops, where did my link go? Let me bring it, uh, let me bring it back in here. Here we go. There. So check out here, Fabian Cousteau, uh, OLC.org, if you want to learn more about the work they're doing, including in Nicaragua. Martin, thank you for being with us, and thank you for the You're great presentation and the questions. Um, Pamela, thank you so much for, for filming for us and that great video to start. And the whole team, the amazing women on the team, thank you so much for all the conservation work you do to protect sea turtles. Bye. Okay, thank you so much. Bye, everybody. Happy World Oceans Day. Happy thank you. Day Happy soon. World Ocean Day. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, guys. For good, good luck to the baby sea turtles. Yes.